that operates with the mandate to strive for the reborn of our apostate Christians. He is also the Chancellor of RCN Bible Seminar. Arome Osai is a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ with a strong body, desire, and commitment to seeing the church established by the present truth and power of the Holy Spirit. He is the apostolic leader of Remen of Speech and Network Global, with a network of churches ministry headquartered in Makadi, Benue State, Nigeria. With a network of churches, ministries, and apostolic centers in Nigeria, across Africa, Europe, and North America that operate with the mandate to strive for the rebirth of apostolic Christianity. He is also the Chancellor of RCN Bible Seminary, Adula. Being a prolific author, he has written a good number of classics, including the two volumes of Kingdom Recalibration. He is married to Dina, and they have three children, Benin City, Join me, make welcome, Apostle Arume Osai. We love and celebrate you, sir. Amen, hallelujah. It's great to be in the city of Benin again. We need to contend for the gates of Benin because once upon a time a flame arose from this place that colonized the world. That means we have a likelihood of such great possibilities again if we contend with that which is domiciled in this territory. And because of that, the kingdom of darkness will wage war to corrupt the aroma of that fragrance by raising people that will misrepresent the pure flames of apostolic revival fire that was manifested through our ancestor. So once and again, we need to come to contend at the gate of Benin until that which God once did, and indeed a greater measure of the same spirit is crystallized in the land. Benin was not the biggest city in Nigeria, but it was the headquarters of the current move of God in those days, the present revelation position of the spirit found its due expression from the land, making Benin a place that Satan will contend to see if he can secure. But a new generation comes with a hunger that transcends most of what is present in the land. It is because God is a keeper of covenant and he can reach back and reach forth until he finds a people that have wiring to inherit that which is offering us. So once again, we salute God for the progress of the body of Christ in the land of Benin. We trust God that on this mission, the foundation of falsehood, deception, manipulation that has found an inroad into the body of Christ will suffer a great damage. <laughs> and a new breed without greed, a radical opposition against unrighteousness will begin to rise in the land that can adequately represent the interest of the kingdom of God. In a moment of time before you take your seat, like us to pray.
The Lord spoke to me, he said, 25 years after the passing of Benzin Daosa, the a generation that is capable of beginning to receive installments of that of the nation on its life will begin to rise in the territory. So, how many years now? That's what makes this one significant. Because God had told me, so we had to ensure that we're in Benin now. Hallelujah. Because I'm also expecting that from this meeting, I'll find mercy of God. Because something will happen before we are done, okay? Yeah. Something will happen. Something will happen. Something will happen. So in, in, in order to ensure that we do not qualify to receive what he wants to offer us, Satan decided to infiltrate our ranks with a wicked gospel. A wicked gospel that was um, designed to bring defilement. And that gospel prospered so much because it was enhanced by very vicious demonic spirits. And all kinds of things came into the body of Christ, particularly in Edo State, also in a few states that are close by. Practice of fetish things, spiritual baths, all kinds of alien practices that we cannot trace to the witness of our ancestors in the book of Acts of the Apostles overtook the entire terrain and began to grow. Deceptions of all kinds. Initiatives that are devoid of righteousness, holiness, and purity. And at a point in time, true authority, which was a hallmark of the apostolic witness and the life of our ancestor, was no longer found in the body of Christ. Church was like a place, like London Business School, where people come to learn what they will never practice. And no one knew the path that led to the place of the Lord. This man was a man of God. He found God in a, in a unique way, and he expressed him lavishly. Can we pray? And said, God, you moved through this land before. Will it, will it please you? May it please you to move through this land again? Let us, let us ask him. You moved through this territory before. Can you move again? A generation has risen. We have battled all kinds of deception to stay in alignment. Can you move again? Can you move again? My so seli kabante mina so latwa. She can pose a sanate kila makanteli. Ubali a so ketelo mohombre vanto si kobahulate. We come to the city of Bini according to the timing of the spirit. To raise a standard, O oh God, a standard of purity, a standard of kingdom alignment, that it might please you again to begin to restore such anointing that you used to shape this land in the years past. Oh God, 
we cry. Let the story of this land not end the way it presently is. But look upon us with mercy and choose from among us such worthy men and women that can be carriers of such grace that will shake the globe. Let these days not be quite casual days, but days of your mercy, days of your grace, days of your power, days when the heavens will be rent, days where your glory will come and find men to sit upon. Look kindly on the land of Benin. We use the witness that has been born from here as a point of contact. Return, return, that we might look upon thee. My Sokuria Bahala terminate. Buse Kaso Sela Pri Fahambo Konde is a Nika Beli Mokoria. Palato Siko Mahatalima. We ask that you choose from among us young men, young women, such that has, have accepted the burden of prayer as a lifestyle, just like it was portrayed in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Men that are willing to stay under the influence of your government so that you will have your way first in them before you have your way through them. We have no power of our own but we ask Lord that these days might be days of encounter, days of the Holy Ghost, days where your kingdom will be enthroned in the land. Oh, we give you praise. Yama mama masukle praskito mentally. Do something among us. Remember your covenant over this nation. Your covenant over the city of Benin. Remember. Remember. And respond to us. Come to us. Send us help. Send us help. Let a little one become a thousand. Let a small one become a strong nation. Presco Falico Pacamanta Baborocaskite, a bronde get a cobocoseta lita cambraita cobelama. Oh, we give you glory in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Seeing that we are encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Are you with me? He said we are encompassed about. That is our reality. We are encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Then he gives us counsel. And I speak to ministers that are in Benin. Listen to me. When we talk about the cloud of witness, we are talking about people that have finished running their own race. Now, in a relay race, no one is crowned until the last runner finishes to run.
check your if you are a minister of the gospel check your ministry what you are doing as ministry and compare it with what has happened here before he said we are encompassed with such a great cloud of witnesses the things that you are using as the excuse for your ineffectiveness those things existed when the cloud of witness operated there are reasons and excuses that you can furnish for living in immorality as a minister of the gospel maybe one of the reasons is that it is common this one is doing it that one is doing it this one is doing it and they are still running ministry so I'm not a strange man the Bible says you are looking at the wrong things you are looking at people that have failed but he said what you should be conscious of is that there is a great cloud of wit that is what I think about that I don't see anything I've, that I've done as ministry success I try to compare what I'm doing that people are healing me with what the cloud of witness that operated in the same territory have done we we'll talk about people like uh, Pyelton Pyelton they did not only he did not only disciple people he prophesied the future that they were going into and the people he discipled they veered off from what he showed them. Are you what I'm about? They moved something else that was contrary to what he prophesied, what he showed, what he decided. Seeing that we are encompassed. Then our ancestor Idahos Arosa. He was the modicum of the expression of apostolic authority. He used his authority to move the church. And it's obvious that his investment. His investment is not in buildings, not in hospitals, but in men. There was this selflessness that was part of his service delivery. He took men out of nothing. And because of the Davidic spirit upon him, they became champions. Hallelujah. It is easy for those of you that are sons of Benin land to say, well, it also has people. That was what the Israelites said, that they were children of Abraham. They were the bona fide people that were recipients of... <laughs> you are mistaken. Because Jesus recommended the works of Abraham as evidences that you have received the same measure of grace that Abraham received. So there's a deception to think that because you are a son of Benin. Let me tell you the truth. This man's mantle is not in the earth now, yet. So anybody that has said one or two things, they are lying. I speak as a watchman. The corruption that is on ground it, it, it cannot be the foundation upon which heavy things like this can come down. Because if you have a life of immorality and this one comes down, you become an enhanced immoral man. It will enhance you. We have a great cloud of witnesses. The first thing he said after mentioning that recognition is that we should lay aside Are you with me? We should what? Yes. Every sin. Can we, can, we, can we talk to God before we sit down? I don't know. When you do your Bible study, do you stop to pray? Lay aside every weight and every sin that doth so easily 
be settled. In order for us to qualify for heavy things, can we ask that the Lord will help us? Because we want to lay some things aside so that we can be consistent with the spirit of the cloud of witness in our own day of pilgrimage. Can we ask God to give us grace to lay things aside? To lay things aside. Lay it aside. You can do without it. Lay it aside. You can survive without it. Aiso sanante kilo moho breskami. Jai kompes kufe lata kula masiko branteli. Ai kompasu ke na habata bresko filami. Jai ko bahata menaki. You can do without it. You can survive without it. Let us receive grace to lay aside. Lay aside. Lay aside. My sakabra hata kante suse la indo. Megleje so kupe kama hinta la bahate. Wits that weigh our spirit down. So that we cannot achieve maximum capacity utilization. In our possibilities in grace. Thank you Lord. Thank you Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we do not attend to what you are doing here casually. We lay our hearts before you and we ask that you have mercy. But by all means, give us a deposit. Give us a release. Give us an empowerment. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. All right, let's do Bible study for 40 minutes. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, beginning from verse number 30. Bible study for 40 minutes. And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, as I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy arms had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter, he is lodged in the house of one Simon Etana by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent unto thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore we are all present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee. Of God. Then opened Peter his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Now, Peter did not know this before. Peter thought that in God there was respect of persons. He thought God was a racist that had pedestaled the Jew superior to the Gentile. That was his notion. That was the education that he received from Judaism. Then he stumbled upon what the handiwork of God had done in the life of Cornelius and the accurate insight into his geographical location where he was found, GPS insight, to locate him, to come and 
herald the message of the kingdom. And it was an angel that gave that intelligence. And I was wondering why the angel did not preach the gospel. Because that's an economy that is beyond the scope of angelic service delivery. So the insight as to where Peter was, was unveiled and Peter was secure. When he showed up, he said, ah, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Just in case you find someone moving in grace, moving in the anointed, disarming what the devil is doing across the nations of the world, do not think that there is anything earthly that is responsible for that. God is no respecter of persons. It means that there are principles that such people actually applied that is responsible for the visibility and for the authority that they carry. Are you still with me? Please help me tell your neighbor that God has no favorites. He only has intimates. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. His perception has not ended yet. Part of his perception is still in verse number 35. Can you help me with 35 on your screen? This is part of the perception. But in every nation, he that feareth him. So we are going to do, find a moment to talk about the fear of God. Because we are talking about alignments that we need to sustain in order for us to be carriers of the presence of God. Um, Apostle. Is that not why we're here? You have an apostolic calling, I know, so don't be looking back. I'm discipling you so that you can enter into the full scope of the calling. Now, the apostolic grace, let me digress a little, is a crown grace. Crown in the sense that it is such a grace that can be used to establish other graces. It is crown. It's like, um, it's a chief and it takes a lot of dealings under the influence and the administration of the cross of Jesus Christ in order for us to, to, to yield an apostle. Uh, it's a calling that requires a lot of sacrifice. If you have read the writings of Paul, men like Peter, because once upon a time, Paul considered himself to be a drink offering that is poured as a libation to a generation. Unto God to a generation, so that God can have an inheritance among men. Now, so the description of the calling is not a self-seeking, self-centered, me, myself, and I agenda. It is someone that has come under the dealings and the governments of God to a point where God can allocate that which is meant for nations, meant for tribes in the custody of the anointing that the places on a man. Now, this kind of calling is not something you can give yourself. It's an ordination. In fact, it's not lucrative because God is going to put you under circumstances and situations that will neutralize your ambition. Just in case you're in ministry, you have seen one or two preachers and you like to be like them, so there's an ambition in your heart. The Lord will deal with you so much that that ambition will expire. Yes, it will so expire. You know, a lot of people like the stage. They like being here. They like being seen. Well, if you start as a young minister, that's not a problem. But if you continue on the path, there's an administration of the cross that is going to meet with you somewhere along the line. And that administration is going to begin to cancel out ambitions, self-centeredness, so that you can become a, a conduit, a true vessel that God can <laughs> pass the allocations that he has meant for nations through your vessel. That's a huge responsibility. Are you still with me? So, that's the part that God has placed on. Right? So, it's growing. And it grows with authority for every ounce of growth, ounce of promotion that you experience. The, some of the yardsticks of measuring it is authority, 
authority. You can wield the authority of God. Hallelujah. And the more powerful you become, the more submissive you are supposed to become under the hand of God. And it keeps going like that until you are no longer in control of your life. You can't even decide where you will go and where you will not go. You have already taken an invitation, but in the place of prayer you were praying and God said, I don't know that person. And the person looks like a good person. You are going to make enemies with a lot of people because you can't align with people. And people will say you are trying to prove that you are the only one that is right. Meanwhile, the economy of the concentration of God upon your life is so detailed that it won't allow you to relate just like that. Are you with me? So God is beginning to raise apostles again in the land. And it is not something to say amen about. It's something to weep about. Because if you are chosen, know that you are going the way of the cross. You might be thinking, you, nation, nation, don't worry. I tell you where you are going is a surgical center. Surgical. I was in that surgery room for 24 years. So I was just released, discharged from that hospital, 2020. 2020, for 24 years. In that surgical room, that's where the appetite for immorality was operated out. The appetite for greed. The appetite to impress people. The appetite for money. So now I'm on a test run. They are testing me now. Okay. Go here. And come back. Yes. So when I came back, I went in. I went in for almost a month to, for evaluation. Then I was just released to come to you. When you leave, listen to me, when you leave that way, when you leave that way, people's clap will mean nothing to you. When you leave that way, are you with me? That you have one million to give me, and that's why you want to invite me, will mean nothing to you. One million. When you leave that way, no platform you are invited to preach on is promotion to you. Yes. There's no platform anywhere. Because it's no longer about platforms. Then you realize that it is not something your flesh will look forward to. Now, the man's perception has not finished. He said, but in every nation, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. We'll come back to this verse if the Lord permits. This is his perception. Then he now begins his message to the Gentile community. What is his message? Verse 36. He said there was a message that that circulated round Judea, and it, but it began from Galilee. This message began after the baptism that John preached. What is the message? It's in verse 36. He said, all of Galilee knows this message, but it began from Galilee, and it has infected the entire scope of Judea. Now, I don't have a map of Israel here. I would have done some geography lessons for us to understand um, the scope of things geographically. Uh, maybe that will have given us an insight into knowing the people that killed Jesus. But maybe that's for another time. We'll do that another time. Um, this message is in verse 36. Verse 38, sorry. What is the message? Now, do you notice do you notice that this is the first message that was preached to Gentiles the first message that was preached to Gentiles 
It's about the anointing, the empowerment of Jesus, about the ministry of Jesus. So let's look again at this because we'll take our bearing from this point. He said, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There were two scopes of, an, of anointing that was operating in the life of Jesus. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost. He was also anointed with power. It's not the same thing. So I will need to explain to us the meaning of being anointed with the Holy Ghost and being anointed with power. Now, because he had an apostolic ministry, and you know that in that chart, apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, and pastor. Are you with me? The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, they are traveling ministers. The teacher and the pastor are stationary ministers. And that doesn't mean that a teacher cannot have a traveling ministry. Right? But in the traditional outlook, we have traveling messengers. So even though a teacher might be traveling, his scope of traveling is going to be very, very reduced compared to that of an apostle. And the reason why I said this is because what you see there about going about is one of the evidences of an apostolic ministry. You will notice that Jesus in the day of his flesh, because of his apostolic authority, never had a pulpit. Jesus' ministry was captured in practical life situations. Maybe they are going for a burial, then Jesus will show up. Then they will touch the coffee. And then the people that are crying at the back will not even know that the, the reason for their tears, Jesus has ended it. And then the apostles will come back and say, how did you do this thing? Are you there? So he was operating under the influence of the anointing, operating under the influence of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and the anointing of power. And his responsibility required that he goes about. So the context of his ministry was his movement. Everywhere he moves to, there was ministry. So Jesus never looked for pulpits. Jesus looked for people. Are you there? Now, maybe we need to, because we are looking for pulpits today. The reason why you are looking for a pulpit is because you are not anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. If you are anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, anywhere you go, there is ministry. You are going. You appear at the market. There is ministry there. You have resources enough to prosecute ministry right at the post office. Are you with me? I went to one nation to preach. It was a crusade. And I finished preaching. And I was heading for my, the vehicle. Take me back to the hotel. So I now saw a woman with a child. And the woman came and cried and said, Pastor, Pastor. And the way she cried, she really cried from her soul. Do you know that kind of cry? So she cried from her soul. And when she cried from her soul, I couldn't ignore the cry. Even though the custom was to follow the protocol and to get into the car and to leave the environment. The protocol were so many because that place is war prone. Security people, military people in that country were there. So I had finished from the pulpit and I was heading to the car. And she broke a little through the ranks of the protocol and cried. Now, I couldn't tell what she was crying about, but she was doing her, her child life. So I walked 
to where she was, laid hands on the child, and then prayed and entered into the car. Then we left. That child was dead. And I, I was not aware. So we finished praying for the child. Then we went and then the child came back to life. That, no, no, no. You are wrong. Now listen, listen. If you have power, if there's power, if you have been anointed with power, when you go about, God will do things that are beyond human. That's the kind of ministry that Jesus had. He had an apostolic ministry that occasioned his movement. And uh, as he moved around, he had spiritual capital in form of the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the anointing of power. And the Bible says that the description of what he did when he went about was that he did good. Um, are you still there? Just trying to defy, because this was the first message that was preached to Gentiles formally. You regret you. You regret you. That's, that's good. And the meaning of you regret you is philanthropy. Do you know who a philanthropist is? Someone that has maybe a businessman that has so much resources, he doesn't know what to do with his resources. So he decides that anywhere he can find a justifiable need, he's going to commit to it. Now, what I'm saying is, if it is true that you have the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the anointing of power, you have a stockpile of resource. And your challenge after that level of spiritual capital will be where opportunities for you to manifest philanthropy. So when you find people looking for pulpits, they don't have power. When you find people say, ah, as you are going to the UK, can you open a door for me? If you find people applying for doors, the person is empty of the spiritual capital. And if you are empty of spiritual capital, the protocol, according to my own little knowledge of the book of Acts, is tarry ye in Jerusalem. You have not been endued yet. You are going to make a mess of things because the assignment of extending the frontiers of the kingdom is not philosophy. It's not, it's not an attempt to postulate theories. Because the wise sayings of the average pastor in Nigeria are postulations. That's not the same kind of service delivery that Jesus was into. Jesus' service delivery was occasioned by spiritual capital. Are you there? He was, first of all, anointed with the Holy Ghost. He was anointed with power. And because of his apostolic concerns, he could not be trapped in the territory. He was a traveling minister, was moving. And anywhere he moved into good things, philanthropy takes place. Because he was in custody of a warehouse of deliverables. Are you with me? So, if you took off from the cave too early, you will be without spiritual identity. And demons of the territories, we need to ask, who are you? Because everyone that was empowered from above, he is ID card is forwarded to the kingdom of darkness for notice. Yes. It means that Satan knows the future problems he's going to have by the register of men and women that have come under the influence of the anointing of the spirit and the anointing of power. Not just the anointing of the spirit. I know you speak in tongues. That's not enough to begin to go about. The anointing of the spirit is a potential. The word dunamis means potential energy. It's just like crude oil. Crude oil is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. It is potentially good, but it is not useful in its crude state. 
you are not with me. When I notice that you are not with me, I will cut the lecture, aspects of the lecture, I will cut it off. When you labor in the wilderness for another two years, you will desire it. <laughs> crude oil. How many of you know crude Okay, this is Niger Delta. Crude oil. It's a complex mixture of hydrocarbons, a complex mixture of goodies, valuables. But it is trapped in a crude form and it is not useful in its crude form. That's how the anointing of the spirit is. It is a compendium of all of the resources that God intends to galvanize your life with. But it comes to you in crude form. You would need to process it in a refinery in order for its fine fractions to begin to fractionate. I guess there's a refinery. Is it? A refinery here. Okay, worry. So, you people are not too far away from the refinery, so you know what I'm talking about. So, when you... Um, uh, the refinery is a simple fractional distillation column for those of you that did chemistry. And then you just introduce temperature and pressure. And then the products that are trapped in the complex mixture will begin to fractionate at various temperatures. And when the fractionation begins to take place, you can trap them in your tank farm, your storage facilities. Are you there? Now, it happens to be that in New Testament theology, the refinery is your ability to speak in tongues. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the Bible makes us to understand that the only gift that the Spirit of God gives to humanity gives to the members of the body of Christ that you can operate at will is your ability to speak in tongues. Every other gift that the Holy Spirit makes available only goes into operation as he wills. Are you there? Are you following me? Stay with me. Just stay with me this morning. I'm trying to teach so that you will have understanding. Meanwhile, I've not reached where I'm going anyway. I'm just passing. So when you bring the crude oil into the refinery, as you must have heard me say before, because I was in the oil industry for 16 years, so I need to talk about it. Most of my examples are here, because I did it for 16 years. So when you introduce the crude oil into the refinery, or the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the one you received for which you began to speak in tongues as an initial evidence, when you receive that measure, the next thing you are supposed to do is that you are supposed to switch on your refinery. That the, a typical refinery is supposed to be switched on for 25 years before it goes through turnaround maintenance. But in Nigeria, we have budget for turnaround maintenance every year, and the refineries are moribund. Now, that can be an illustration of the state of the average believer. The refinery breaks down regularly. So God doesn't have the opportunity for the conversion process. So even though you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit for the last 30 years, your baptism in the Holy Spirit has not yet been processed to produce the product called power. Are you with me? When you put the crude oil into the refinery and you introduce heat, if you if you, if you raise the heat to 47 degrees, the first thing that will come out of the refinery is what we call the associated gases, heating oil, um, LPG. You know LPG, the one you use for cooking? Those ones will begin to come out. So you trap them in a gas chamber. Are you there? And then you begin to test the parameters of the gas to see, is it more like heating gas? or more like cooking gas. And then if you find that it is close to cooking gas, but it has not yet fulfilled the parameters for cooking gas, you introduce some cooking gas to it so that you can manipulate those parameters and then it becomes, the range becomes consistent for LPG. You can sell it as LPG. Are you, are you there? When you introduce heat and the heat goes to 65 degrees, 
75 degrees, you are going to have what is called aviation turbine kerosene, which is what we use to power jet engines. You trap it in a tank, you introduce a chemist to check the parameters because there are industry standards for what makes for aviation turbine kerosene. And just in case what you have does not amount to industry standards, you downgrade it, it becomes household kerosene. Are you there? After kerosene comes out, the next thing that comes out is premium motor spirits, the one you use as petrol. And in advanced countries like in Europe, we have the regular and we have the super. So if your car is from 2017, you're supposed to be running on super. And then if your car is older, you're supposed to be running on regular. But in Nigeria, we have, all of us have to queue up. May the Lord give you understanding. Are you there? So there are some products that will be missing because our refinery is not adequately calibrated for, for high sensitive deliveries. Are you still with me? That's the same thing that happens. That's what the anointing with the Holy Spirit does. It's a complex mixture. Are you there? When you introduce it into your refinery, which is speaking in tongues, and you, you create a habit of speaking in tongues, especially for longer hours. If you speak in tongues for longer hours, and I'm talking about a minimum of five hours per day, it will take you seven years to hit power. Oh, I'm... Okay, because you are amazed, I will, I, will, I will remove the time frame so that you can be encouraged. You think, you think, you think, you think because Uniben gives awards degrees after four years of schooling, you think that's how it happens in the kingdom? Yes. After seven years of consistent refinery usage, the complex mixture will produce a product called power. Meanwhile, it is needful for you to understand that most believers, when they speak in tongues, what they produce is gas. Gas. Those gases. And the gases don't have the capacity to move some high-level demons. And that's why the ancestral issues and all the covenants are still in place, because you are producing gas. <laughs> now, you will notice something in refinery operations the more the refinery runs, the heavier the products that it, com it comes up with. Premium motor spirit, then AGO, which is diesel, is heavier than petrol in Ancoms. From there, you have heavier products until you have products that are solid, like bitumen, like asphalt, that are used to pave roads. So the weight of product that comes out of your refinery is dependent on how much temperature and pressure you can hold for long inside. Mm. You know, we are in Benin. It, it, this is the household of power. Authority flowed here once upon a time. So let's preach the gospel according to authority, according to endowment and power. Because I've seen in most of the ecclesias in Benin, <laughs> you people are becoming philosophers. <laughs> Powerful rhetorics and entertainment capacity. That's not how ministers of the gospel in those days prepared themselves. I mean, why it's an error for a minister to think that that kind of thing is ministry if in this city God gave an example of what true apostolic authority is about. So I will not use the shortcut to have a ministry that is both weak and wicked. Either. So, the more you can contain the temperature and pressure, you can contain it for seven years, full impact. You begin to see some products that you never saw before. And it's different. It's different in, in, in density. It's different in, in, in weight. It's different in possibility. It's different in effect. New products just begin to come out for the final. Are you there? 
No problem. You want to move in a real prophetic anointing, which is not by research. Because word of knowledge in our time is by research. They, they just give out the decision slip and say, okay, Phil, we are trying to update our data bank. Meanwhile, they, they move it to the man of God's chamber. Then he cramps the Yusuf, Daniel. Zero is zero. Now, if you want to move in real word of knowledge, are you there? They are not following. <laughs> How many of you were alive when Ben Zindahosa ministered? Do you realize he never called anybody's phone number? You know what? Yeah, I'm just trying to make you understand. If you, as, as high as he never called anybody's phone number. You know why? You already know your phone number. And he didn't deliver you. The, he never. He never called him. In, in the evening, we'll do practicals. This morning is for theory. Then maybe you will see the purpose of the gift of word of If I have time, I will teach you about the gift of word of knowledge and show you the purpose and practicalize it. But you will know. <laughs> so decision slips became a very important part of ministry because we need information. That was not how Billy Graham was. If you don't have time to process this thing in the refinery, you will become like that. Uh, you don't want that product to come out by itself. You will begin to carry decision slips and begin to cram. And sometimes you will call some people's name because they told you on Facebook that they are coming. So you, you cram it. And then you now say it and then uh, the person is not around. Um, I know most of the sharp men are in Benin. <laughs> But that, it is a taboo to do that kind of ministry when God modeled true apostolic authority before our eyes in the city of Benin. It's a taboo. So those of you that knew the Archbishop closely, you will know his life of prayer. He was a refinery man. Day and night, praying, praying. That's where the products came from. If you follow his ministry, you will see the growth of his authority. He didn't start like that. The growth, because the refinery started producing heavier products. If you don't have a history, we don't know when you started picking little by little. We will not believe you when you start calling names. For the past 20 something years, you have not been pick, you have not been picking. Ah, then you just come and say. You went to wash your eyes somewhere. That's not how God works. There is a track record for every move of God that is trapped in the life of a man. So don't come and think we are all novices. That you're, <laughs> where are you coming from? When people come close to you, if your refinery is operational, they, you afflict them with the spirit of supplication. Maybe somebody sleeps on the bed that you came to sleep. The person will Yes, there are deposits that your life carry to infect people with the same things that you have found in the Lord in your own practice of ministry. Just like people with weak prayer lives here, before this, you will know there's an ability that will come on you. I, I'm not boasting, I know it. I know it because for like 27 years of my life, I've been an intercessor. Like 27 years of my small life, I've been laboring as an intercessor. So if I minister to you, you might think it's teaching you are listening to. You are receiving impartation of what is, forms the structure of my life. And that's what happens when you sit under the ministry of an immoral pastor, minister. The ability to even convince people's wives, it comes with the... <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. 
Are you there? So when you put the refinery to work, the products will begin to come. So in my own experience, and if you are going to um, function in the apostolic, you are going to grow. God will commit one anointing to you first. For me, he committed teaching. So I operated as a teacher for 12 years. And I have referees and people in the body of Christ I can ask you to go and confirm my 12 years of teaching ministry where I was a raw teacher. There are people that I can send you to to confirm it. Then after 12 years of teaching, God now added this power that people fall. And he started growing. There are people that also know me in that context. Are you there? I moved in that for a while, and then healing now started operating. Little healings, then it started growing. Now I can see blind people, deaf people. Do you understand that? Now, what has come on me is prophetic. So I receive prophecies for nations. There is a, your refinery, there, there, is, there is a product inventory investigation that your refinery should produce if it is still operational. And if you decide to shut down the refinery for two years, you will need turnaround maintenance to get it back to work. So people that are here that have not yet understood the disciplines of maintaining your spiritual life, you are shortchanging yourself. Yes, prayer is difficult. It's not easy for any one of us. But that's the only way. So in spite of its difficulty, we trust God for the grace to stay there. If not, you will be naughty. You know, I always say that if you are 21 years old and you have not prayed for 10 hours, what happened? Your life is a joke. You are going to be a product of the local witchcraft in your family. The local witchcraft will manipulate your life and your life, the outcome of your life will not look like what God intended. That's a joke. You came to joke. The moment you snap into prayer, you begin to see that the influences manipulating your life are not that powerful. It is your inability to set your refinery in motion that has empowered darkness in the territory of a do state to, to colonize your life as one of the trophies that Satan has won. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He anointed him first with the Holy Ghost, which is a complex mixture and then he, oh, you don't believe me, so. <laughs> All right, let me show you from the Bible. Acts chapter 6. Just stay with me. We'll, I will use this morning session to introduce the subject. Then we'll continue gradually, gradually, gradually. If we do little theory, we'll do some practical. But most, mostly in the evening services, then we'll be uh, more open to the supernatural so that we we'll have some teaching that you can work with, some, some working documents that can help your navigation uh, in your journey with the Lord. Um, I need to look for a scripture. Acts chapter 6. Are you there in Acts 6? And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their wid widows were neglected in the daily ministration. The twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason, it's not good that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Are you with me? Now, these guys were trained by Jesus. And if you study the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, you are going to see one of the scenarios of kingdom apostolic training that Jesus gave to the disciples. If you read carefully in the book of Acts, you can tell what Jesus taught them. Whenever you see things that they could not negotiate, are you there? Things that they could not negotiate, even under pressure, you will know that those things were part 
of the education they receive from Jesus. They have been praying for church growth, church growth, and the church growth had come. And it came with its attendant problems. And now there was obviously a gross situation of lack of manpower. Such lack of manpower that looked reasonable for the apostles to stop their own secret line of ministry to begin to take up administrative responsibilities. And even though the need was so glaring, they said that we're not, it is not wise to leave the ministry of the word and serve them. The reason why they knew the difference was because this was part of the education that they received from Jesus. It was this gap in manpower that led to the establishment of the office of the deacons, which is supposed to be an administrative layer of service delivery, so that they can give themselves to the ministry of the world huh? and then to the ministry of prayer. Now, if you see an Ezemo that is called Maybe the shrine names you as the nest in line to take over the shrine. You, your family has to release you first. They do send forth for you. Then you now come and what your life will be about is that you give yourself to the knowledge and the service of that spirit. That's a description of your life. And for a minister of the gospel, the description of your life is that you have given yourself to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the world. That's what your life is about. So, yes, we knew you were working in a bank, you were in Access Bank, and now you resigned to do the work of the ministry. Your current job description is that you give yourself. Anything you give yourself to is going to shape you. If you give yourself to a spirit, a water spirit is going to shape you and then you become an evangelist to that spirit. The spirit will want to gain recognition, gain memory and worship through the advertisement that is doing through your life. So you become a proof of what the spirit can do. So when you give yourself to the ministry of prayer, it means one of the things that will shape your life is prayer. Now, and I need to show you the evidences and the, the changes that will take place in your life because you give yourself to prayer. There are changes that will take place. If those changes have not taken place in your life, forget it. You cannot have a ministry that can bring true apostolic witness and extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God. If you are trying to open a door, the door will only open and close in one direction, depending on where the hinges are. The hinges are the things that determine the movement of the door. Are you there? In ministry. It is your giving yourself to prayer is one of the hinges that determines how you can change, how you can move. And when we say giving yourself to prayer, it means to depend on prayer for at least 10 years. The impact of living by prayer, you begin to see visible results and visible impacts on your life. Are you there? In the first 10 years. Not earlier than 10 years. So you don't know the power of prayer until you have prayed consistently for 10 years. If you are planning to live like 100 years, 120, 90 years, as I am planning, investing 10 years out of that life to master prayer as a foundation for your existence is not a great price. Because, are you there? When you invest that 10 years, then you now master prayer. That means you have been shaped according to prayer. One of the evidences that proves that you have been shaped according to prayer is one, your ability to trust God. When people criticize you, speak about you on Facebook, 
and you feel the responsibility to respond to them, you don't know God. We don't know God. You feel there is a need for me to defend myself. You don't know God. The Bible says concerning Jesus as a lamb, before her sharers is dumb, so he opened not. If I know that the God that I'm doing business with is the almighty God. Have you heard David said? Because of his knowledge of God, he said, I will not fear what man can do to me. If human beings do stuff to you and you feel the need to explain, you are shallow. You have not yet been, been shaped by prayer. If you go out to preach, you preach self. Because you are empty of God. Trust for God. Dependence on God. Allowing God to bring vengeance. Allowing God to determine your timing. I've seen a lot of young preachers. You want to be on Facebook when your doctrine is not yet pure. It takes 10 years of Bible teaching in secret for you to master the handle of the teaching anointing. You just started, you are in the second year and you're on Facebook. Now, those errors you are teaching there, even when you now mature, people will still recognize that you are the peddler of error. They won't be able to trust you again. Now, is there no time again where you learn in secret these days? It's already in, on prophesying to the nations. When he's still living in sin, there's still a girl that is rocking his heart. <laughs> but it's on Facebook, it's prophesying. Kaima mama mama mama. So when you find a man that, that doesn't know what trust in the Lord is, he's not been shaped by prayer. He's been shaped by other things, not prayer. When you find a man that has not mastered his appetite, I'm talking about because what sin is, sin is a power that is resident in your flesh. So sin takes advantage of your appetites. Sin takes advantage of sleep, hunger, sex, appetite to see, appetite to hear, feeling. So sin takes advantage of these potentials. And the psychology of sin is that it wants to draw you away from God. So the steering wheel of sin is factored in your appetites. And the goal of sin is to take you away from God. If you are not a man of prayer, you have not found the secret to live a bold sin. Our ancestors, apostolic ancestors said, a praying man will stop sinning and a sinning man will stop sinning. So when you see someone that has not gained mastery, in the area of his appetite. It's, God will not kill all the beautiful girls in Bini because you have come. No. It's like, ah! I was with a pastor, and we'll be talking, we'll be talking, we'll say, hey, see the cough, see the cough. So I knew he was an accident looking for where to happen. In fact, I had to escape from him because if you are close to a man that is noticing... You too will start noticing. You'll be infected. What gives you the ability to live above sin is that you are perpetually in the place of prayer. No, no holiness without mastery in prayer. Prayer is, is a paralyzing drug. It paralyzes the flesh. Huh? Are you there? You just notice that uh, you are beginning to have feelings for a lady. That one that comes to greet you in the morning. If you are a man like me, you will put yourself on a prayer diet. It takes three days to kill that thing. It takes three days. I've done it over and over and over. I can give you a prescription. 
Are you there? So when you find a man that is still not, he has not mastered how to keep his appetites together, it means he has not been shaped by prayer. Are you with me? When you see a man that lacks direction, because it's possible for you to be anointed, but yet you lack direction, it is because you were not shaped by prayer. You were praying to preach, not praying to live. Praying to receive message from God so that you can preach and they say, a new prophet has come to town. You have the anointing upon you, but you have not exploited the anointing that is within you. The anointing within you is for your daily life. The anointing that is upon you is for your service. So you have perfected the service angle. You have not perfected the living angle. Because if you want to perfect the living angle, you'll notice you have an anger issue. you make that anger a subject of prayer, calling God to judge it. You stay on it until the Holy Ghost goes to work and he arrests that anger and he strangles it. Are you there? That's how to pray to live. You see that there is, because of your past, in Uniben, you slept with 98 girls before you left 400 level. And those spirits of immorality will follow you. They are not so powerful. You know that you have an immorality issue. You focus on it in the place of prayer. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. God, I can't continue like this. You must help me on this matter. You must help me on this matter. You will see that God will strangle immorality and the appetite for it will dry up. Are you there? There is no man that is in this place that is not attracted to women. But it's not every man that is in immorality. The ones that have escaped immorality have found how to deal with it in the place of prayer. If not, it's going to be a challenge. It's, in fact, it's an ancestral issue. Our ancestors. In one orthodox church, I saw what their elders wrote. And concerning women, no man has power over them. That is the elders. Aiso Sela Mukuru. The elders, they, they sat down. That's what they wrote. You will handle it in the place. Based on the way you have utilized the flesh before you gave your life to Christ, the devil will develop strongholds along your life. So you need to identify those strongholds because they are likely points of satanic entrance. Identify those strongholds. You, 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 you attend to your life like business. And then you, collide, you erode the strongholds and you break it through prayer. And this, when you are still dealing with sin and breaking the yoke of sin from your life, you don't go on Facebook to preach. You should not be known. Remain in your closet. Be doing home cell, home cell prayer and all those. Nobody should snap you like this. Then you're like this. <laughs> you are still making mistakes. You are still prone to making mistakes at that level. So don't just hide. Keep doing it. A time will come, you'll just discover that those things are no longer an issue. Greed is no longer an issue. I worked in an office at a certain time and uh, I was given the stamp of the government. The people that worked in that office before me, if the stamp for you is 500 naira, so in a week you can make 13 million, 13,000, uh, 15,000, 25,000, 60,000. In that's no, in a day you make 20,000, 25,000, 13,000. So 13 to 13 to 35,000 in a day, but in November and December, in a month, you make two million.
So people will fight to be in charge of that town. I went, and now I, I was sincere. I went to God. I said, God, if they give me this town, I go chop money. Oh. I, I told him. So help me now. I went on dry fasting. I have checked my heart. The ability to resist that money, I don't have it. I go chop. I go even chop past the people where they did. <laughs> so I went to him. If you lose your virtue of sincerity, you cannot work with God. Did dry fasting. Then God now said, I will go with you. So I was there for four years. I didn't take bribe once. They moved me to another higher place. That higher place, I'm supposed to make 500K per, per week. 500K per week. I was there for seven years. I made nothing. I was very powerful in Lagos then. Very powerful. My stamp, if I put it, I can, the thing can be up like this, I can be saying, well, until I see a lot before. <laughs> I dealt with it here. So I was able to live without it. It was prayer. Today, I am every, every, all over the place. The people I work with, they know that I didn't take bribe. They know. So even though I never preach to them, they used to call me pastor. And when people have serious problems, they come to my office for deliverance. We're delivering people in the office there. But in a corporate environment, but people were not aware. We're doing all kinds of things. Liberate, counseling. I dealt with it in the place of prayer. And I was sincere to God that this money, I'm tracking. If this kind of money comes, I've already seen a car like. I dealt with it. Are you still with me? Now, so if you are still being ruled by sin, it means you did not allow prayer to shape you. There are also some shapings that will come when you submit yourself to the authority of the word of God. When you see a man that is careless, have you seen a man that is loose, careless? Such a man has not yet drank of the fountain of the word of God. Because part of what the word of God will make you become is that it will make you righteously strict to yourself. Make you what? righteously strict. When you see a loose man, you know he has not drank of it. Truth is not in him. You mix with any kind of people. Say, so, oh, preachers with bad, bad, bad identity in the body of Christ. You are there. Here, they are there. We can't say, oh, no, you don't know the word of God. And I'm not saying you are not studying and you are not preaching. I'm saying, you do not recognize the authority of the word of God to rule over your life. And these are two different things that you preach. Many people preach about giving. They don't pay tithes. And that's why when you see a pastor that is poor, that is destitute, before you, you have compassion on him, investigate his life. So when you find a loose man it means he has not found the authority that is in the word of God to regulate him. That's why it's like that. He should be righteously strict to himself. He should be mercifully kind towards others. There's kindness flowing out of his vessel. It means he has found the word of God. And secretly pure toward God. Not, not, not publicly pure, but secretly. Pure. There is something he has with God that he doesn't want to lose. Because of that, he lines up. Not somebody trying to make you feel that, okay, we are holiness people. That's flesh and darkness. That person too has not found the word of God. That person. Not found the word. 
Religion is not the word of God. So we've seen people make a public display of, of holiness. It's filthy. Even in the eyes of men, it's filthy. Before we talk of God. That's not found the word of God. They're using the flesh to attempt to please God. Those are dead works. But when the Lord rules over your heart, if it is true that he rules, ah, his words will constrain you. The one you find in the scriptures and the one the Holy Ghost will speak to you. It will constrain you. When you see a man constrained, people are doing this, but you notice he's not doing it. Something is constraining him. He has found the ministry of the word of God. And those were the two things that the disciples said that they will not give up the ministry of the word of God and prayer to serve table. Because the temptation in that scripture was for them to leave ministration and begin to do administration. Because the checks are coming in, the funds are coming in, you can just be signing checks and releasing stuff because the ministry has grown. And every ministry that grows attempts to make the preacher stop ministration and start administration because there's ease now. So let's do the business part. And so you will find people that used to operate their refineries before. The moment the ministry now becomes big, they drop that. It means they, are, they succumb to the temptation that came with growth. You see, when the number of the disciples multiplied, this was what happened. Are you there? So when you find a man that is loose, he has not found the word of God. He, 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 he preaches something that he believes is the word of God. But that word has not yet become an authoritative principle through which God can constrain him. He is false. He is false. His preaching cannot produce what the Bible is saying because he himself has not come under the influence of the authority that is in the world. I don't argue with scripture. Do you argue with scriptures? All right. If you don't argue with scriptures as a, as a pastor, huh? you'll be angry with me, so let me leave you. If you, don't agree, if you don't argue with scriptures as a pastor, you are not supposed to be a pastor that preaches only one type of message. Because the Bible says all scripture is inspired of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine, for teaching. So if, if I see what you teach and you teach only faith, you are just faith, that's what you are doing. <laughs> you are playing. You are playing because you are not going to take sin in your church um, seriously. You are not going to take it seriously. It means that what you are doing negates holiness. In 15 years, you are going to have challenges that will drown you. It will preoccupy you forever. Because demons will take over that church. Something will start happening that you cannot stop. You don't have authority to stop. Sin will break into the house. You won't have the authority to stop it. So you have to accommodate it. I say, okay, well, you know this thing, if we press too much, uh, people will go. It is because you have not found the authority that is in the word of God. So Satan will bend you and make you fake, even with your best of intention. If you study the writings of David, you will hear David say things like, I sought for your word and I found it. That guy is looking for principles that will govern his life. Are you there? That's why when he entered into adultery, he didn't need much pressure to know that he was wrong because he knows the standards of God. He went to beg. He went to beg. He went to beg. The prophet gave him three options of how he will solve his problem. He said, let me go to God. And he was willing to be humiliated. Today, a pastor is caught in immorality. We say, stay up pulpit for two years. Build your relationship with your wife, you have seen, it. if you go and do poster, that members are going.
So he's more interested in being in the eyes of the people than having secret purity with God. So how can he be a carrier of the presence of God? How can he be a carrier of the presence? He has not found the word of God. So he's a rascal. And a rascal cannot extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God. Even though it is, he is gathering 2,000 people every day in Benin. There is no hope for their transformation. I've been in the ministry long enough to know the difference. Long enough. Started preaching at the age of 12. Yes. So I've been long. Long enough. Long enough. Even though those days on campus, you cannot be an ESCO member in 100 level. I was Bible study secretary in 100 level. That's when we started developing outlines. Developing belief, building belief systems for our people. We so spoke about sin that people were praying that I should commit fornication once so that they could come out. They waited till I got married. And they will wait till the last trumpet. Because I found the word of God. He said, They are life to them that find it, and they are healing to the issues of their flesh. Now, so the, the, the question I need to ask you is, is it true that the word of God has authority? If not, we will not have wicked pastors. The pastor sleeping with two members of the church, sleeping with two members of the church, and then they started recording him. When the thing blew out, he was crying. He was not crying because he repented. He was ashamed that, ah, his cover has blown. He has not found the word of God. He should have cried for his soul. He has not found the word of God. The word of God will show you your priority. Show you the path that wise men follow. And that path does soon compromise with the flesh at all. It shows you what our ancestors did that they found favor with God. So that irrespective of the economy, you can have spiritual and, and financial resources sufficient for you to prosecute the demands of your destiny. The word of God will make you a steward so that when billions begin to flow through your hand, it will not translate to your wardrobe. Yeah. We have served God in that capacity. My clothes people make for me. This is the word of God that made me so. I was in Lagos for seven years. And the Holy Spirit said, don't buy a car. My salary for one month can buy a car. One month. If I collect salary, I can go to a car shop and buy a car. He said, don't buy a car. That's the word of God. The voice of God that came. I was using those yellow buses for seven years in Lagos. And at the end of seven years, when the test was completed, he said, I gave you this task so that you know that the life of a man doesn't consist in the possessions that he has got. That's the word of God. That's what it does. So that is how I became a conservative. It is following his voice. There are some kind of vehicles I can't buy. Although people are giving me today, they are... They are dashing me now. The reason why I'm riding them is because people gave me. I will never buy it. Because I was without a car for seven years in the Lagos that you know. Somebody came for counseling. After counseling, I hopped on a, on a tricycle to the bus stop. The person was ashamed for me. The reason why I was not ashamed of myself, I know the authority that put me there. And I know it. Today, you have a standard. If they don't come to pick you with this kind of car, you will not enter. You have not found the authority of the word of God. You have not found 
That's why we make a mess of things. We manifest flesh and we call it standard. We use speed, we use Keno to go to some places for crusades. There's no road till today. Philip's village. We put our car in a ferry and then we cross to the other side. Put everything in a ferry. Any means of transportation that can take us there is good enough. The standard is service. But you will never be like that if you have not found the word of God. You will copy something that originates from the flesh and you will adopt it. And those are the things that will make you wasteful, will make you misrepresent God, and will make God reduce your, your rank. You can't pass into the place of authority. Meanwhile, this is not where I'm going. Let me try to see how I can. Are you still there? What I'm trying to do is introduce the message. Don't worry, I will, I will, I will soon learn. He said, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. That's their preoccupation. That's what they were going to be shaped by. They'll be shaped by the philosophy of the word of God and the voice of God, and they will be shaped by prayer. I know the shape of a man that has passed through this process. I know how it looks like. I know how it looks like. Beware what you call excellence. Beware. For two years, every flight I, I flew was business plan. International, national. Everywhere you saw me go for two years, was business plan. Then we had to take on additional missionaries. And one business class seat, my partners were willing to pay. One business class seat that time was 5,000 USD. Are you there? I said, we are going on economy now. They said, no, that will not happen. I say we are going. So I now flow economy after a long time. And the people that I was sitting with were exceedingly fat. And they walked that place. I was like this. But I was willing to be like that until I go where I'm going. Because when we come out of the plane, they will not know how you sat. Oh, if you can no longer make those adjustments and your own, there's a print, you are serving something else. You have not found the word of God. Because the word of God is supposed to be a ruling principle over your life. Meanwhile, the example of Jesus was that he did not count it robbery, did not see it as anything for him to relinquish compliments and things that accrued to him because of his equality with God. He was willing to let go, even though it was his right. When you begin to operate under the government of God, you can no longer stay with your rights. You take any mode you need to take in order for you to be of service to God. Do you know, while I was in that economic cabin, and that's, that's a plane that has first class, business class, premium economy. Premium economy seats are like our business class seats in our local airlines. Premium economy before economy. I was, I was like this. <laughs> and I wanted to fast. So I put that, uh, you know, that stuff to cover my eyes so that I'm not interacting with anybody. I'm calling on the Holy Ghost. Suddenly I now saw Dunsin. He came to my seat. You will be moved from here. I don't know what he meant by that. When we were airborne, the air hostess came to me and said, I should take my bags and they took me to business class. That one, it was God that did it. And, but my heart had already shown him where I can go, I can change the figure because of it. When I got to business class, I know how to use that seat, so I stretch it. 
Uh, it's not as if I, not, I have not forgotten how to use the seat. But the situation on ground demanded that I... Can you downgrade your comfort so that the will of God can prosper? That is a proof that you have met the ruling principle that is in the counsel of God. Let me stop there. I know you don't, you don't, you don't like my talk. <laughs> I, I am... I am... I'm talking to you as a man that has been around. The fake we see today, people manifesting fake. The examples most of you have to grow under, those examples are not approved by God. If you press a bit deeper, you will find out. And I speak as a watchman that was in the cave for more than two decades. More than two. I speak because I've heard him. That was where God started correcting the lawlessness I was carrying in my soul because I followed wrong examples. Find him. Find his voice. Find his words. Allow the authority of his voice to guide your spirit. You will be free from the corruption. You will be free from the perversion. People will call you the plumb line preacher that holds truth on your lips. People will know your soul cannot be bought. They are not looking for platforms. God will give you honor beyond platforms. That you are in your house. People are sending you money. You don't even know them. You don't know their name. So you can't, you can't call them to say thank you. What I get when I'm not preaching is more than what I get for preaching. So I will never go on an invitation because you can't give me anything. I assure you. You can't. Are you there? Meanwhile, you can't be like me if you have not found the word of God. The word of God for living, not for preaching. For living. The one that regulates your soul so that you will not become a castaway. We have seen examples of excesses, examples of errors, examples of misbehavior from the pulpit. Somebody was praying for the sick and left the people he was praying for. He slapped, he slapped his aid and then he continued to pray for the sick. We've seen People transmitting from negative terminals in ministry. So if you don't have the word of God, you will get lost. The examples are terrible. You see that? It is after this reading, after they said, we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. They now said, okay, let them raise people that will do the administrative business. Verse 5. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. They chose who? What's his credential? Can we jump to verse 8? This is after a period of time. The Bible now says, and Stephen, full of faith and what? So the Holy Ghost anointing in Stephen had become a power anointing. The same Stephen, he had moved from full of faith and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now his description is that he's full of faith and the power of the Holy Ghost. Notice that the Bible says about Jesus that he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and anointed with Are you following? Do you still remember Jesus when he was baptized of the Spirit? The Bible said that he went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Is that true? That was where he fasted and prayed and contended with Satan. Satan was trying to get him to function outside of the government of his father. That was what the temptation was about. Are you there? Now let us see how Jesus came out. Sorry. I think it's in the book of Luke.
Luke chapter 4 verse 14. That's the Jesus that was anointed with the Holy Spirit at the rivers of Jordan. Went into the wilderness. How did they come out? And Jesus returned in the power of the... So it is not... It wasn't instant. There was a difference in time. Difference in alignment. Difference in pursuit. Between the time he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and the time he became anointed with power. Are you there? So, this was what happened to him. He had two levels of spiritual capital. Anointing with the Holy Ghost, which is the complex mixture. And then he had exercised his refinery until the products that are locked in the complex mixture started going up. Just like Stephen. Full of faith, the Holy Ghost. Then what? Full of faith. So how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing acts of philanthropy, why? Are you afraid? Because God was with him. That is the presence. He was anointed with Holy Ghost and power. What was the effect of the Holy Ghost and power on him? He did good. So it is through the anointing and of the Holy Spirit and power that we minister to people, that we help people, that we assist people. But it is by the presence of God being with you, the presence, that you are protected. So I'm going to stop there for now. So I've introduced my message. There is a difference between the anointing of the Holy Ghost and power and the presence. He said, for God was present. It is possible for you to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and power without presence. And I will show you why. Have you been to a meeting before? You see the person operating something, but there was no presence feeding your spirit. You've seen it before? That person doesn't have God's approval. For what? God was present. Okay, come again. Go to the book of uh, John chapter 3. John 3, quickly. This is my technical man. Where are you? There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him, presence. So Jesus did not only have the ability to walk miracles, to do signs, to do wonders. Jesus was a carrier of the presence of God. And I'm going to show you the difference between an anointed man and a presence carrier. Many people are pressing to become anointed people. They are not pressing to become presence carriers. We know that thou art a teacher come from God, not because of your teaching. We know that you are a teacher come from God because we, the scribes and the Pharisees, are teachers in our own right. But we, are, we, we, don't know, we don't know if we are from God. But you, we know that you are a teacher come from God, not because of your teaching, but because you have capacity and ability to do damage to the kingdom of darkness and still survive. There's a protective gear that you carry around that you don't have feedback after you molest Satan. So the anointing gives you capacity to be able to influence the people's lives. Then the presence you carry becomes an insulation from satanic injury. Are you there? So I, I will just try to introduce this message. I've, I've introduced it now. In the evening, we'll continue. Then I will show you... <laughs> I will show you what a man of presence can do. Uh, that's practically. What a man of presence can do that a man of anointing cannot do. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power... 
he had the ability to go around doing good and fulfilling works of philanthropy because God was with him. So I'm going to teach you this weekend what it means to be a carrier of God. You move with God. And I assure you, by the time we are done with the lecture, you find this is not the desire of the average young minister. The average young minister is looking for anointing. He's not looking for the present. And I don't know, senior ministers say, I don't know what you have become. An anointed man? You are empty of the presence? There's a lot for us to talk about. But when you go, go with the full package. Anointing and presence. Anointing and presence. So we'll deal more with the presence aspect. What, does, what is it? What can it do? Why should we desire the presence? There are several things you will never know if you don't know the presence. Like now, most of you don't know now that there's an angel that has come here. Most of you don't know. Because you don't know, you have not been taught in the presence. You cannot tell when the cloud gathers. When he walks in in the cool of the day, comes into your bedroom. When you need to leave your wife and attend to him. We don't know because we don't press for the presence we press for the anointing I know you don't believe when I said there's an angel that has come it's on my right hand side I know you don't believe <laughs> hey la 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 Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's. Now, can you see? Did I pray? I didn't pray for her. I didn't, I've not done anything. These are the, these are the entities that are accommodated in that person. They are accommodated there. They are, they are there, they are accommodated. As the presence starts becoming louder and louder and louder, their effect starts becoming stronger. This is a defense and a protection mechanism that God gives every minister of the gospel that is willing to come under alignment. I've not started anything. Are you there? We have not started. Now, I, if I say hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, and I do it seven times and I stop, you will see the presence will increase. You have not? Okay, let me try it. Hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. This is now see I'm not I'm not releasing anointing, I'm not doing anything. The presence is intensifying. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we've seen the hand of God move in various nations. Even places where they say, oh, witches are here. Which
summoning you into the inner chamber. The inner place. it up. The hand of God will come on 47 people. 47 people. Father. Now wait. Just keep quiet. Can you keep quiet? Stop praying. Stop praying so that you can receive. Stop praying so that you can receive, okay? Now, many things are going to be transmitted. Some of you will be delivered from masturbation right now, from pornography. Some others will be empowered to, to, to go further in prayer. Some will receive the spirit of wisdom. Some will receive all kinds of things. But the hand of God will be on 47 people in this morning. In the evening, we'll go into miracles, signs, wonders, the chemistry of wonders, the chemistry of signs, how God opens blind eyes, or stop deaf ears, how he empowers a man. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you stretch forth your hand from my left hand side to my right hand side. 47 people need a quick touch. Help us, Lord. Find those 47 people. Let your hand come upon them so strong. Let the fire be so palpable. 47 of them. 47 of them. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. Locate them. With your flame. With your fire. With your flame. With your fire. Locate them, locate them. Let your hand come stronger. Let your hand come stronger. Let your hand come stronger. Let it come stronger. Locate them, 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 Jesus. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Like a wave, 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 like a wave. Holy Ghost. Move. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God walks with him. Oh. Aina 
Mobo Santeli Makadia Aina Masiko. There are three people in the congregation. There's a special anointing that is coming upon you so that when you are on your knees in the place of prayer, you will be seeing the effect of what your prayer is doing. The hand of God is on you as I speak. The Spirit of God is on you as I speak. It's on you so mightily. It's on you so mightily. It's on you so mightily. Your eyes will be open to see what God is doing through your prayer. of you here including those of you there are seven people I'm looking for the Lord will touch them seven of them Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost touch them 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 your heart and it gives you capacity gives you capacity evening okay Lay the ear that do, shall set a ear that bakash. 